For the veterans of the Vietnam War, though, those who are left, it's bittersweet. Their fight is far from over and time is running out. Cameron Bennett with this story. The Crown is placing on record its respect for the service of the nearly 3,400 New Zealanders who served in Vietnam during the war between June 1964 and December 1972. We honour the 37 personnel who died on active duty, the 187 who were wounded, and all those who have suffered long-term effects. I've always believed that. If you send someone away to do a job, when he comes home and you don't um, look after him, well, something is wrong with the system. 1970 and Tūrua Karatea was an artillery man with 161 battery stationed at the Anzac base at Nui Dat in South Vietnam. He and other Kiwi servicemen were exposed to a highly toxic brew of herbicides and insecticides. Well, I've seen them, I've seen them being dropped and doing clearing patrols around the guns and that in the jungle. I've seen, you know, droplets on the, on leaves and that. So you just can't ignore it. it it's going to be there anyway. And what about the Nui Dat base? Did you see a lot of spraying going on around there yeah, well, on the ground? That happened just about daily. Yeah, they had dusters there. They're doing that particular job. But we didn't, I don't think you question, I don't think I ever questioned what they were spraying for. 76 year old John Blewett from Fakatani ended up a section commander in Vietnam. We made a pact at the beginning of the operation to say that we'll start the operation together and we'll finish it together. And this was, this was the photo that was taken. Today, there was only four left alive. I did uh, 16 odd years in, in the army. I did two tours to Vietnam. I've got a, a lung a disease, I suppose you could call it, and it's called uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, I asked the, uh, the specialist, could it be because I've been exposed to uh, dioxins. And he said, there's every possibility there it is. And there's nothing to conclusively say there it is. But uh, Veterans Affairs ac accepted it. Um, and, uh, they pay for the medication. Well, there's no treatment for it. One of the most controversial American operations in Vietnam. Just the name of it evokes all sorts of horrible images. Agent Orange. To me, it was only weed spray, you know, because it, 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 um, uh, you know, I came from a farming background and we did spraying of ragwort and thistles and things like that. It was, it was, to me, it was just another spray. But it wasn't. Agent Orange was laced with a dioxin later linked to cancer and deformities. During the war, 76 million litres were sprayed over Vietnam Servicemen and civilians were exposed, and the deadly legacy, Vietnamese say, is still being felt today. Although that war was long ago, there is lingering anger about the United States' use of a controversial defoliant spread by American aircraft on the jungles there. Vietnam is convinced that these children are just the latest victims of the deadly chemical dioxin in Agent Orange. The U.S. plan was to kill off massive tracts of jungle, providing cover and food for the enemy Viet Cong. At Nui Dat, the Anzac base, Gavin Nickel was ordered to hand spray the perimeter. We were told it was dangerous, and I was a bum boy. I was doing the, the shifting work and all that with them. And uh, this chemical we now know as Agent Orange. Were you wearing protective gear at the time? We had the tropical raincoat and the tropical raincoat in, in 30 to 40 degrees was useless. And um, the gloves didn't fit, so we were just, we're just shorts and, and uh, raincoat. 
So how long were you handling Agent Orange? We only did it over uh, probably four or five days. Decades on, it was revealed New Zealand had actually manufactured and supplied a key toxic ingredient used in Agent Orange from the Ivan Watkins plant in New Plymouth. A cruel twist, but at the time our servicemen were oblivious to any of it and only later started feeling the effects. When we came back from Vietnam, uh, I think it was about eight months later, we went back to Singapore. Uh, while I was over there, I had this rash. Uh, it just covered my whole body. So that, <clears throat> I was sent down to Changi to see a dermatologist. And um, she told me it was insect bites. But I never believed it. Just, the skin just peeled off in sheets all over my body. So I've had skin rashes all, pretty much all my, all my life since then and still get them today. But I had a uh, Veterans Affairs sent me to a uh, specialist, skin specialist. He took some samples off me and told me that um, it was a lack of uh, circulation. But I didn't believe that either because it's, um, you know, this, um, when I was scratching, it just felt like there were mites on or something was under the skin all the time. And it's just unbearable. 50 years of unbearable itching, but Tūru was convinced Agent Orange cost him so much more than that. It's pretty hard to talk about this. Uh, I had a, uh, <clears throat> a child in uh, the UK who was, uh, had deformities and um, never survived. Um. Turo and his partner were living in the UK at the time with no one to turn to and no understanding of why. Pretty tough going uh, that time even with my partner. Because you sort of, you know, you, it's hard to explain to people what it's really like because you're, you don't have, it happened over there. And um, you don't have the backup like you family or anybody like that around you, you had to deal with it yourself. So my way of dealing with it was to just keep quiet. Gavin Nickel tells a similar story. I have a wife and two children. My daughter was born with uh, one functioning kidney and spina bifida. And uh, we lost one. But uh, that was a late miscarriage. Do you directly attribute your daughter's condition to the chemicals yes, in does. Vietnam? Yes. We were trained to, to go yeah. to war. We went to, went to war, but that war was easy compared to the war we've got now. At John Blewett's place in Fakatani, surviving vets share more of the same. Yeah. Um, see, at this stage, my children are fine. Mm. Well, I think they are. Yeah. My, it's my two grandchildren that are not fine. Yeah. My focus is we sh I should be worried about my children and my gran grandchildren. And that's why, for them, Vietnam is a war without end. What happens to our uh, children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren after yes. we've gone yes. and this genetic damage that's passed down, who looks after them? The jury is still out on Agent Orange. American studies concluded there's inadequate or insufficient evidence to prove defoliants are directly responsible for birth defects in the descendants of Vietnam vets. A Massey University study in 2006, though, 
confirmed that genetic damage is a real possibility. And two years later, our government offered veterans a formal apology. The Crown extends to New Zealand Vietnam veterans and their families an apology for the manner in which their loyal service in the name of New Zealand was not recognised as it should have been, when it should have been, and for inadequate support extended to them and their families. The Crown places on record recognition of the service of those personnel and acknowledges the many consequences of that service, including the physical and mental health effects. But vets say they're still waiting on more tangible and substantial guarantees for their whānau beyond the current entitlements and grants. I hope that they'd recognise that, that there could be intergenerational damage through, through our exposure to, uh, through the, to the dioxins, and then that our children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren, or however far it goes, will be looked after medically. After the break, the fight of their lives, protecting future generations from the damaging legacy of Agent Orange before it's too late. So, sis, where are we at with Uncle's submission? Well, we're still waiting for the substantial hearings. Around another table in Mount Maunganui, lawyer Moana Sinclair and her support team are working to advance Vietnam vets' concerns through a special Waitangi Tribunal inquiry. But it's been painfully slow. I'm not bagging um, the Waitangi Tribunal. They're doing their best. It's got a, a limited jurisdiction, the Waitangi Tribunal. And we know this, but, you know, we, we're putting our claimants' clients before it. The inquiry has yet to make final recommendations. That's some 15 years after the formal government apology. There is the commitment to put things right where government action is the appropriate means of achieving that resolution. Moana acts for 10 Māori veterans. She acknowledges the support they do get, but believes they're entitled to much more. They do get medication, they get their things like their lawns clipped. Um, so they do have grants. They're not saying they don't. They're saying, you, you know, we're worth more than that. We gave our lives. We want a blanket compensation and acknowledgement. Is there a number that they put on that? I would say in the millions. Today, I am announcing the normalization of diplomatic relationships with Vietnam. The government has now agreed to pay $8 million a year to veterans. American servicemen who qualify receive ongoing disability benefits which can run up to 42,000 US a year tax-free. 30 years after the war ended, our government finally created a without blame one-off $40,000 payment for vets exposed to Agent Orange, provided their conditions fitted a prescribed list. Turua discovered he wasn't eligible. No, he didn't qualify because it was, uh, it's, it's uh, put on a time frame. And if you didn't meet that time frame, you didn't get it. The vets say accessing entitlements is a struggle. They feel they have to work the system rather than the system working for them. Yeah, you've got to jump through hoops. And, uh, and the other thing is that you get a case manager and a couple of months later, you've got another case manager. So the system will say, well, you need to show us in this big list here of conditions that you have that one of those. So they go, they go to the system and they say, well, you know, I need a test on this or that. Have I got that? And it might come back that they don't have it. So what do they do then? So they'll find another doctor. Same thing. So they're jumping through the same 
hope. If it's taken us 40 years to prove that we were actually sprayed with her, and then we've been saying that all the time, for years, well before we got pensions. So what's the matter with the system? The system is failing somewhere. And if jumping through hoops to access entitlements is hard for Vietnam vets, it's doubly hard for Māori Vietnam vets. It's because they don't understand the system, probably be the main one. They don't know what they're entitled to and they live in isolated areas and can't be bothered going to the to the, the city. A few years ago, Gavin and I, went, we did a tour down the coast from Whakatane to Gisborne and we, we processed 86 pensions that people weren't getting the entitlement. There was no heroic homecoming. The war was hugely unpopular and returning vets found themselves on the receiving end. We were told by a warrant officer uh, to get out of uniform and uh, and go away, but they didn't say go away. They used stronger words. There was nothing for people to spit at you and spit on you. <laughs> that happened. They were also outcasts at some RSAs. I walked into the bar and these old guys were in there and said, what are you doing in here? And I said, I'm a member. Oh, how come you're a member? I said, well, I'm a I've got a returned serviceman. Well, where did you fight? In Vietnam. Oh, that wasn't a real war. You shouldn't be in here. Did you feel that as a Vietnam vet, you didn't receive the same respect that vets from past wars had had? Yes, oh, yeah, definitely, yes. The Vietnam vets probably been all through all that rubbish, and we're ensuring we've got to make sure that the the guys of the modern conflicts like Bosnia, Timor, Afghanistan, they don't they get don't get treated how we got treated. These days, Gavin Nickel is a lay preacher. They call him Padre. He was a private in Vietnam and is still haunted by what he saw. A man being beaten to death by the QC while the QC had machine guns on this little crowd I was in, in the place called Vang Tao. And by QC, you mean? A, a military police. What were their nationalities? They were Vietnamese. They were animals. They were real animals. I had PTSD and I didn't even know I had it, you know. And I, and I thought the things I was doing in life were, were just natural. And I, and I think it impacted on my, my wife, impacted on our, uh, on, 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 our, on our marriage. Um, and and my you know, it must have impacted on my children as well. Because there'd been a lot of drinking, I suppose, a lot of Oh, uh, yeah, the first thing violence. I took, Yeah, I... Not really violent towards my family, but uh, um, yeah, drinking. Um, uh, you know, I'd, I'd disappear for three or four days, and I'd come home, and and I suppose it was like, uh, let's test this marriage out, see how good it is. You know, uh, just be on the booze with my mates. Vietnam vets and veterans from other conflicts have shared their stories with the Waitangi Tribunal's Military Veterans Kopapa Inquiry, which began in 2016. Its findings are expected this year, but for the old soldiers, time's running out, and they want guarantees for their whānau before they go. I was speeded up, speeded up. You know, the, the, the situation cries out itself. They're dying, you know, they're dying. And so please speed it up. I just want <clears throat> the Veterans Affairs or the government to step up and um, look after those people who are coming after us, the generations that are after us, 
that have been affected by this. Um, you know, and forever, how long it goes. It's not going to die with us because our children and our mokopuna inherit our legacy. That is the shell shockness and the chemicals in their bloodstream. And we've given them a, a nasty inheritance. Yes, age is against them and the clock is ticking. We understand the Waitangi military inquiry, considering the veterans' concerns, will make its recommendations before the end of this year.